Hello, Horus Heresy fans. Welcome to Heresy, the Horus Heresy talk show. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about loadouts and tactics for the Kratos Heavy Assault Tank in Horus Heresy, the Age of Darkness. So let's get to it. First of all, some basic facts. The Kratos is very cool, very awesome looking new tank, but it is quite expensive. It's 300 points before you add anything onto it. And for that, you get 14 armor all round and five hit points, which compared to some of the other big tanks, like the Spartan and the Land Raider, isn't actually a huge amount for the points. But what you do pay for on this vehicle is its main weapon, which we're going to talk about in a second. So also, AV-14 isn't that tough anymore. So las cannons are really good. Las cannons have got Sunder. Las cannons need a five to glance you with a re-roll, which means that roughly 55% of the time a las cannon is going to take a hull point off you. And when it rolls a six, it's, all, it's going to pen your armor as well. So AV-14 isn't that hard to take down now if people put a few las cannons into you. So don't think this is a big, tough, undestructible tank. Unless you put a flare shield on it, at which point it becomes very tough to take down because you're only being glanced on sixes by those las cannons and most of the slightly bigger guns that people might bring are actually quite hard to come by, bar on the Kratos actually as it turns out. So if you're going to invest more points into your Kratos, like buying some of the more expensive upgrades like las cannons we're going to talk about in a second, the flare shield makes a lot of sense to make it into more of a tough tank. And, and on the flip side, if you are going to buy the flip the flare shield, it makes sense to invest more points into making the tank better to get more use out of the fact you've bought a 350-point tank as well. And then the last thing is it's not got power of the machine spirit. So I've seen a few people make this mistake. Unlike the Land Raider and the Spartan, all of the Kratos' weapons have to be fired at the same target. Obviously, unless they're defensive weapons such as the Volkite weapons or heavy bolters, in which case they can fire at the nearest infantry target instead. So that's the basics. Now let's talk about the best part of the tank, the main guns. So first of all, the Kratos comes with a coaxial auto cannon, which is very good because if the coaxial AC hits whatever you're shooting at, the main gun gets to reroll its misses for the rest of the turn. Now the coaxial auto cannon's got two shots, which means that you have got a very good chance of one of them hitting, and just over 88% actually, if you care to know the numbers. So the great majority of the time, that coax AC is going to hit whatever you're shooting at. Now forget the damage it does, that's not why it's there, although an extra bit of damage is always nice. What that means is your main gun has then got an 88% chance of hitting as well, which is better than having Ballistic Skill 5 by a little bit. So this has got a really super accurate main gun, thanks to that coax AC. On top of that, the two weapons, the Melter Blast Gun and the Kratos Auto Cannon, are both really good weapons as well. So the Kratos Auto Cannon is nice and flexible. Uh, the Kratos Battle Cannon, I should say, is nice and flexible. It's got a nice big blast weapon with pinning, which is, you know, pretty good. It's also got a sundering uh, anti-armor weapon, which is pretty good, but you're not going to use it because you're always going to buy flash burn shells, which for 10 points are pretty much an auto take if you've got the Battle Cannon on this. So flash burn shells are strength 10, AP 1, and their armor bane range. Now they are get hot, unfortunately, but we'll, we'll take that. So if you think about what I've just said about how accurate this is, it's going to hit almost all the time with that shot. Strength 10 armor bane means you're going to average a 17, which means on average you penetrate a flare shielded Spartan or a flare shielded enemy Kratos. Even one less than average, you penetrate it. And anything with armor 14, you're almost always going to penetrate it. And when you do, you've got plus two to the roll on that damage table because you're AP1 as well. So this gun is crazy good damage wise it has only got a 24 inch range though so it's not the longest range thing in the world and that's why the melter blast gun is also good so the melter blast gun is standard melter weapon so strength 8 armor bane ap1 but it gets four shots and it's range 36 which means to get the value out of it it's range 18 so the flash burn shells are a slightly longer range but the melter blast gun has got four shots 
and is only slightly less strength so it's also a great option and it's a free upgrade so you can choose between these two and i think the other good thing about the melter blast gun is because it's got so many shots it's also pretty decent at killing things like terminators so they are going to get their invulnerable saves but you're going to instant death them if you hit them unless they're salamanders and you're also going to go through their two plus save as well which is pretty good so that's a pretty decent thing to have access to as well so both of those guns are really good and uh, as i meant to mention with the uh, battle cannon as well it's also got a pin and shot on it as well so it's anti-infantry shot it's large blast five strength eight pin which is also a nice thing to have access to as well so a bit of flexibility from that gun there the only thing that's a little bit weak on this tank is the volkite weapon so you do get 12 shots and it is strength seven but that's it. it's also a pin and weapon but that's it it's not really super exciting for a, a really big tank to take a gun that's just kind of good at killing space marines because most things can be good at killing space marines so i would probably avoid that for your main gun if you're going to be running this tank other guns uh we've also got las cannons we can change some of the the four heavy bolters we've got into volkite weapons and also auto cannons and heavy flamers as well so generally what you want to do when you're deciding on your weapons is make sure you're not mixing your weapon types so you've got to decide what the tank's for so if it's going to be shooting at other vehicles you probably want to give it all las cannons along with its battle cannon or its or its melter gun and you've got an awful lot of shots there and you're probably going to significantly hurt what you what you hit. Or if you've got all those cannons and that melter blast gun, that's eight big shots you can put into a unit of terminators that are bearing down on you as well, which is good. Alternatively, if you are going to mix the weapon types or you want to spend less on the tank, you can keep your main gun on the top, whichever one of the two good ones you choose, and just make all the rest of the weapons on the tank either volkite or heavy bolters because then they can shoot an infantry unit as well and it keeps the cost of the tank down and it also means you get use out of all of them while still getting that super accurate deadly main gun the only things that are a bit out of place on this tank are the auto cannons so auto cannons are not great at killing vehicles or heavy targets but they're strength seven so they're not defensive weapons either now auto cannons are kind of okay at killing things like rhinos but that's not really what the kratos wants to be doing so the auto cannons are a bit out of place on this vehicle, so I would probably avoid them because they don't really fit. Likewise with heavy flamers as well. Heavy flamers are okay, but you're probably not going to be spending points or spending reactions to Overwatch with this tank. And you're also probably not going to be getting into template range if you can help it either. So most of the time, you'd rather just have one of the anti-infantry guns on this. So I would also avoid the heavy flamers. Pinnacle weapons... Uh, also aren't that great on this tank i would probably just avoid spending the points on them but the one weapon i do really like is the multi-melter it's the most expensive but if you are going to upgrade your tank you know at least the multi-melter is a real gun and if you're using the melter blast gun particularly or if you're just intending to drive forward and fire nothing but flash burn shells the multi-melter on this might not be a bad investment either but generally i would skip the pinnacle weapons so let's talk about some suggested loadouts then. So the loadouts I like are firstly an anti-tank loadout. So this is coming in at 410 to 430 points depending on what variation you take. So you're either going to have the battle cannon with flash burn shells or the melter blast gun. You're going to take all las cannons and we've spent a lot of points on this tank already. So we might as well turn it from quite hard to kill to very hard to kill by putting a flare shield on it too and this is one of the loadouts where if you have got the melter blast gun you sort of might as well put the multi melter on it since you've paid for the flare shield since you've paid to make the tank super hard to kill you might as well put more guns on it and make sure it's going to do as much damage as possible in the meantime so this is a really brutal loadout really scary in terms of damage output and actually quite hard to kill as well the second loadout I would suggest is more of a mixed roll loadout. So this is a battle cannon with flash burn shells, and then we're just going to load it up with Volkite weapons. So the Volkite weapons are the best anti-infantry weapons on the vehicle, really, and also a flare shield. So what this is going to do is we're going to sit a little bit further back with this one. 
we're not necessarily going to get to fire our flash burn shells straight away because of the shorter range, but we're going to use that battle cannon to either shoot anti-tank rounds into big targets, or we're going to shoot anti-infantry round blast rounds into smaller targets, also shoot all those Volkite weapons maybe into the same or a different target. And then we've got that flash burn shells there as well for, for really hitting some big things as soon as we can get into range to do that. And then we've got the flare shield on top of that as well to make this super tough to kill for your opponent. And the last one is the what I would call the sniper. Now it's not the longest range sniper in the world, so more like the uh, tank that we won't be driving forward getting into combat trying to keep it alive and just keep its guns going is really the idea of this loadout. So the idea of this one is really just to keep it cheap. So we've skipped the flare shield, and because we've skipped the flare shield, we've tried to skip everything else as well, making it as cheap as possible. So it's only 310 points, which is way cheaper than the other loadouts. You know, it's 100 points cheaper, basically. We're taking the battle cannon with the flash burn shells, so we've got that really, really scary anti-vehicle shot available to us. And for everything else, we're just keeping the heavy bolters on it. So we're not even buying those Volkite calibers. We're just keeping it as cheap as possible to make sure that all we're doing is basically getting as much value from that battle cannon as we can. And this is sitting at the battlefield, back of the battlefield, quite far away, ideally, probably on armor value 14, which again, isn't that easy to kill, but is much less of an attractive target because it's cheaper as well. So they're the loadouts I would probably be looking for. Now, of course, you might want to vary those a little bit. You know, there's nothing wrong with adding some Volkite weapons and not using the flare shield or, you know, maybe taking all the las cannons and not using the flare shield. There's, you know, plenty of stuff you can do in there, but that's the way I would probably run them to get the most out of them. A little bit of advice for more fun loadouts as well. So obviously you might be listening to this and thinking, well, these are a little bit too serious business for me. And that's cool. If you want to mix and match the weapons on your tank and particularly if you really like the Volkite Cardinal, which I think uh, could have done with being a little bit better probably, but I've seen lots of people putting that weapon on the tank. It does look amazing, as all Volkite weapons do. If you just want to mix and match the weapons on your tank and maybe you know you want to use the Volkite, you want to use a couple of las cannons, that kind of stuff, I would just try and follow a few uh, some much lighter guidelines because the, you know, the thing I always say is you don't want to build and paint a big, awesome-looking tank and then just be really disappointed every time you use it on the tabletop. So you don't have to follow the slightly more optimized loadout, but equally try and get yourself something that does work and means that you have fun when using your tank and it feels like a big, scary battle tank. So if you're going to use the Volkite Cardinal, I would definitely keep the tank cheap because it's not really worth spending tons of points on it. And obviously, you know, a maximum tune build on this would be, like, super fun. So you got the Cardinal all Volkite, everything else, and it's just going to shoot troops all over the tabletop. It's going to kill lots of them. It's going to be great at killing Space Marines. It's going to possibly pin them as well. You know, just try and keep a role in mind like that for when you're building your tank and just make sure you've got an idea of what you want it to do so you can still get some use out of it whilst building it with a cool, varied weapon loadout. Some extra things to throw in as well here, just in terms of tactics and other stuff. So, range on any anything really and you know on this tank can be a, a really big advantage and although you won't get to use the flash burn shells if you've got a lot of las cannons on the tank you've also got a pretty decent range on the battle cannon as well which is 36 trying to keep yourself at a longer range and just you know keep yourself further away from the action makes you a lot more survivable you know it means you're not going to get charged by chain fist terminators it means you're less likely to get melter gunned and all that kind of stuff and you know don't be afraid to keep this at range a little bit early on in the battle until a few things have died and then you can commit it forward and bring those big flash burn shells or the armor bane on the melter cannon to bear also, do consider a searchlight on this if you don't have one elsewhere in your army as well. So the worst thing to do is to spend three, 400 points on a tank and have night fighting mean that you can't shoot anything with it. Particularly if you do bring a bunch of stuff like this, your opponent might just choose to have night fighting so you can't shoot them on the first turn. So for the sake of five points, if you haven't got one elsewhere in the army, do consider putting one on this unit. But I would recommend in, in most armies, rhinos with searchlights are great. Rhinos are great in general, but using them as like a searchlight machine to find stuff for your other tanks. And so, you know, your other tank can't be shot because it's got the searchlight. It's just a great thing to put in your army. So don't, you know, neglect to do that when you're building your forces as well. 
few comments about some different legions and how they can use the Kratos a bit better as well. So Iron Warriors throw out all of the preconceptions about what weapons are good in this game, which I find hilarious. So auto cannons are pretty good on Iron Warriors because they're strength eight against vehicles and two shots, you know, so suddenly they're pretty decent at shooting predators. They're really good at killing rhinos. They're still not a super optimal weapon, but they are better. The Volkite Cardinal gets a lot better as well because it's got 12 shots and it's strength eight. And that is actually quite a lot you know so if you're shooting at av13 vehicles for example you can just blow something up with those 12 strength eight shots you know it's a lot of it's a lot of big shots and also as well the heavy bolters the volkite weapons on the rest of the tank all becoming strength seven suddenly turns them into good anti-rhino weapons you know that kind of stuff as well so iron warriors do change up what you, what is good on the tank ultramarines are obviously good with most vehicles just the ability to get plus one to hit on your vehicles is awesome and Imperial Fist as well. All these heavy bolters that this tank's bringing do get a lot better. And in some of the builds we were talking about, the heavy bolters are actually just better than the Volkites and cheaper if you're bringing Imperial Fists as well. So there we go. That is a little bit of chat around what you can bring on your Kratos and how to get the most out of it. It is certainly not the absolute most powerful model that you could be taking in your army but it does have a pretty insane main gun that you can use really well to get great value out of it and it's going to look fantastic on the tabletop whatever you put on it thank you very much for listening guys if you enjoyed the content please do drop me a like and a subscribe i would also love if you would drop me some feedback or a comment to discuss anything that you've heard about in the video today as well so thanks very much for listening and i'll see you all very soon